Trev, as we mentioned, it's a night in which we celebrate the people behind the players. So I'll throw that question in your direction. Who was your mentor growing up? Uh, a guy you might know uh, in the business, Ron McLean from Hockey Night in Canada fame back in Canada, a CBC guy. Uh, he gave me my first break in the business, mentored me along the way as a runner for Hockey Night in Canada, working alongside he and Don Cherry back in the day at Maple Leaf Gardens, walking in there every Saturday night to do a Leaf game was something that uh, still stays with me, something I'll never forget. And to this day, when we catch up, uh, I'm reminded of how much Ron McLean meant to me, getting my, giving me my start in this business, and uh, a fine professional as well, a guy that anyone would be proud to watch and claim as a mentor for sure. I think Trevor Thompson is a professional name dropper. There. He did. He's <laughs> just dropped, yeah, that's that's a dropper. big one. I can squeeze a few more, and you got time <laughs> <laughs> to get us get us out of the gate. John Keating. John Keating's my <laughs> yeah, mentor. Okay. Can I drop that name that, right that now? That one won't take it. That one won't take it to the front gate. Uh, let's bring in Mario and Rod from the booth upstairs. Mario, who was your mentor? Well, I, I kind of separated between professional mentors and others, and for my professional mentors, I got to go with the guys that I grew up listening to. That would be Ernie Harwell and Paul Carey and George Kell. I mean, I, I believe in this business, you learn by watching other people, how they perform their work, and for me, those three were the best. You know, my first year here in Detroit was Ernie's last year. I just watched the way he handled himself around the ballpark, in the clubhouse, on the airplanes, and learned a tremendous amount from him. But really beyond that, it's my parents, uh, Dominic and Rose. They were always supportive of me, and I thank them for that because really, I spent 10 years in the minor leagues, and you don't make any money in the minor leagues, Rod. You know that. <laughs> and so you ride the buses, you eat bad food, but they never once said, why don't you become a doctor or a lawyer? I wanted to become a broadcaster, and they supported me the whole way. So for me, those are my two most important people. You know, I have a few people that uh, I would like to give some props to, and two of those guys I met the exact same year. Both guys are in professional baseball. One is David Dabrowski. The other one is Dusty Baker. I met Dusty Baker the summer of 77, the year I got drafted to play professional baseball at Dodger Stadium, and we've remained friends for a long, long time. We vacation together. Lots of wisdom there. I lost my father years ago, and I could go to Dusty with just anything, and he's always there for me. Dave Dombrowski, I think he's largely part uh, responsible for me getting this job here in Detroit, to be honest with you. I've known Dave for a number of years. I've worked for Dave for a number of years. He's got my kids' jobs. I mean, he's been a huge mentor to me, and none of this happens without my wife at home. I mean, she's just been so huge. Sure. When you have this kind of career, and you're always traveling, and you're always on the road, and you have kids at home that have never, ever been in trouble, and she's able to make sure that everything stays intact all the time, Adrian, she's been huge as well. Mario, did you have the brains to be a doctor or a lawyer? Was that, was that an option? Was that in the no, equation? It was never an option, Keats. <laughs> Believe me, it was never an option. So really, it was easy for me to tell my dad, Ain't no way I'm going to be a doctor. Look right. at my grades. Very good. And no, Murray, I believe you could have pulled that yeah. off. There's no question. Thanks, Simo. There's it, no question you could have pulled it off. Rod just saved the price of sending some flowers back home with uh, his lovely thoughts about Adrian. <laughs> All right. Who you got? Well, guys, first is going to be my mom, Marilyn Monroe. Uh, just the way we grew up and wanting to, to give her a different life. And for her to... To be my biggest fan, she's at home now. I guarantee you she watched the show. She, her whole life revolves around the show. She, she builds confidence. She gives me the swag, the confidence that I have yeah. to do my job now. And from a professional standpoint, as far as, I guess, broadcasting now, I have to tell you guys, he's not going to like it. John Keating inspires me. Also watch a lot of Rod Allen. Both of these guys believe that I had the opportunity or I could be good at this job. And so I got on board. We could give you some fashion tips. Maybe, well, maybe no, what I don't to, want you guys. Maybe what to stay away from. That's no, 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 no. <laughs> that's that's what makes me who I am, Keith. <laughs> well, everybody, uh, you know, gives gives props to, to our wives who are uh, there when we're doing these goofy things and with all these goofy hours. So I'll, I will uh, throw that in the direction of uh, my wife Linda, um, but also a news director in Grand Rapids who took a shot on a guy who really had no business being in the business, Jack Hogan, and uh, three guys I worked with in Denver, Steve Harms and Gary Cruz. Now the late Gary Cruz and. Brian Drees, they helped me mightily along the way to the point that we could be here in front of uh, you on television.